Hey, what is going on everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how to install the Sonus 360 in a FAT 360 console. Essentially what the Sonus is, is a speaker that you have to wire into your system itself. You don't need to have a reset glitch hack, you don't need to have a JTAG, an RJTAG, nothing. You can do this on a complete stock system. You don't even need a flash system because this has nothing to do with a console hack. But essentially this is just a speaker that you add in so you could have custom sounds for your eject, pass and if you do have a hard modded system, your glitch sounds as well. This is also going to be a direct wire install, meaning that all you need aside from the proper soldering equipment is the Sonus 360 itself and whatever comes in the box, which means you're going to have the little adhesive residue to put onto the actual system in the Sonus along with the wiring piece. Now this little adapter you can use, however, if you do want to use wrapping wire or Kynar wire specifically, you can follow this guide set the same, but right underneath where the adapter plugs into the Sonus, there are five pads and you just solder the wires into the pads from where I show you on the motherboard. I don't want to take too much time for this intro but I just wanted to explain all that. Now without further ado let's go ahead and get into this. Now for our first point we're going to go ahead and knock the hardest point out of the way. This is going to be for your white wire and you are going to need to solder it onto this resistor right here and this is going to be for our eject button. Go over to where your eject button is and find where the resistor is as I can show you there. You're going to have to solder it onto to the point that I'm highlighting in red, which I'm making much bigger on this video because it is a very small point. Proceed with caution on this point as this is the hardest point, but if you can do this, you can perform the rest of the hack with ease. Once you have your point cleaned up properly, you want to make sure you flux it real well. Just proceed with caution on this point and take as much time as needed. So once you get the flux down really well, you're going to want to tin the point of course. Now be sure to put a little bit of pressure on there, not too much but be sure to not keep the soldering iron on that point too long as well. Just do the fact that it is a very, very, very tiny resistor and you can screw it up real easily. You just need a little bit on there to get by. Once you have that point properly tinned, just go ahead, put the wire on there, solder it on, and once it makes a proper joint, you should be good to go. Give it a few little tugs just to make sure it's on there, but nothing hard enough to rip it out of the system. Once that's done, congratulations, you've done the hardest part of this hack. Let's go ahead and move on. Now let's go ahead and go over to where your audio video output is near the top of the board. This is where normally you're going to hook up some NAND points and such. As you can see, we're going to go four down from the right and these two points right here that are red and blue are both alternate 3.3 volt points that you would normally use on a hack. I'm going to go with the alternate points just in case you ever decide that you want to do a reset glitch or an RJ tag hack or even just read the NAND. But I'm going to go ahead and pick the top one. Now it really doesn't matter which one you pick honestly, I've had luck with both of them, but I'm just going to go ahead and pick the one that I highlighted in red. Now when you're soldering onto this point, if you've ever done NAND points before, just do them the same as you normally would. Make sure you have a good connection and such. And it looks harder than it really is right here. That is mostly due to the fact that I was learning with my new soldering iron while recording this video. But anyways, once you go ahead and finish that up, excuse my finger for obscuring everything right here, but you just want to make sure you have your point properly tinned, and then from there, go ahead and solder in your red wire and make sure you have a good joint on there. As you can see right here, the wire seems to be fine. You might want to give it an extra tug or two, just a light tug, just to make sure that everything's good on there. But aside from that, as long as it's not moving around, as long as it's not coming out or anything, you have that done. Let's go ahead and move on to the next point. Now we don't even really have to move right here, but what you want to do is go over to the point where you have your audio video output, pick any of these prongs and go ahead and lightly tin it. You really don't have to put flux on here because it's very easy to solder onto, but we're going to use this as our ground point. This is very reminiscent of the reset glitch one days. All you need to do is once you have it tinned properly, take your black cable and lightly solder it on there. Once you have that soldered on, again, just give it a few light tugs. If it sticks on there, you should be good to go. 
Now for the last point I'm going to be showing you all, you need to go over to your RF board and find this point right here that I highlight in red. This is going to be for the power sound. You want to just go ahead, make sure you flux it real well, and then tin it and solder on your cable as normal. This is going to be for the yellow wire, and this is a pretty easy point to do, so you're nearly done with this. It's very easy to tin, as you can see, you could even be generous with the solder if you want, and then soldering on that last wire is easy enough. Now once you've pulled that off, congratulations, you're done with all the required parts of this hack. There is a orange wire that you can use and that is for your glitch sound, but I will not be using it for this install. By now you might be wondering something. You might be asking, Mario, what are we supposed to do with this orange cable? Well, this cable, in on this console specifically, I'm not going to be soldering into anything. This is more specific if you want a glitch sound. So if you have a reset glitch or an RJ tag board, there is a little part on there that says glitch or I think it's LED. I don't remember what exactly it says. If I had a system open like that, I would show you, but this is just my stock flashed system. So I'm not going to be soldering this to anything. So you could probably just keep this to the side. I would not recommend cutting it due to the fact that you might want to, you know, do a reset glitch or an RJ tag to your system later. But I would recommend keeping it as is. If you really want to feel safe, you could always just use some electrical tape around this so it doesn't hit anything, but just keep it somewhere nice and secure. Now, when it comes to actually locating and programming the Sonus Fat on your console, it is supposed to go back here. And because of this, it has come with a little adhesive that I will show you all right here. However, I would say it's really, really annoying if you stick it on there and then getting it out, especially since on this particular model of system, I do have this part of my heat sink uh, obstructing everything. So I really don't have much space to get in there, as you can see. So what I'm just going to do, yes, it's supposed to go there, but all you really do need to know for now is we're going to be programming it. So we can just go ahead, take this and hook it up and we'll be good to go. Now before we can go ahead and program this, of course we're going to need the programmer. So for this, I will be using the JR Programmer version 2. I believe it's the version 2. You cannot use a Nandex or any other programmer with this. Unfortunately, it has to be a JR Programmer of some kind. It could be a 1, a 1v1, or a 2. But if you have a Nandex or any type of other Nand flasher, you cannot use that with this. Uh, with this, we'll also need the specific cables that come with it. If you bought your JR Programmer uh, with all the cables and everything, it should have them. But you're going to need the cable that looks like this. The ends are going to have, it's going to have three ends. And it's going to have a green end, a white end, and a blue end. Uh, all you have to do, it's pretty simple to set it up. You're just going to have to plug this in right here. Make sure you don't plug it in the wrong way like I almost did there. Once that is plugged in all nice and secure, this thing feels really flimsy, which is what I don't like about the JR programmer. But once you have all that in, you can go ahead, plug in everything right here to the Sonus chip, and make sure you plug in everything the wrong way, well, the right way, as I said. If this goes in, finally, we got the green plug-in right here, which this should also go in like so. As you can see right here, we have everything soldered in. We have our wires hooked up to the Sonus. We have our JR programmer also hooked up to the Sonus. All we need to do is hook up our JR programmer to our computer and we should be good to go. Now that the hard part's out of the way, let's go ahead and do the easy and fun part. You want to go ahead, open up the latest version of JRunner. I'm going to have the link down in the description and open up the Sonus 360 editor and pick what sound you want. I always do auto verify and then hit right sound to console. Now you can make your own sounds and there is a guide to do that. I will put the link down in the description and tell you all how to get to that. While you're doing this as well, you're going to have to do this all through the JR programmer and do not have your Xbox on, but make sure there is a power plug hooked up into it as that is the only way you're going to be able to flash the Sonus. Let's go ahead and wait for it to finish up.
Now after waiting about a minute, it's done. All you need to do is go ahead test the sounds. You can hit play eject or play power. And once those work, congratulations, you have now installed a Sonus in your 360. Anyways, that is it when it comes to this install. You can now go ahead, rebuild your Xbox, and you should be good to go. I hope I really helped you all out. And this is a nice little confidence builder if you're wanting to get into JTAGs, RJTAGs, or reset glitch hacks. And it is a nice little mod that you can do on that. So I would recommend giving this a shot because it is pretty fun to do. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you for watching, everyone.